bats use them, so do dolphins. Both species rely on echoing sound waves to find their way around. Harnessing those waves for human navigation became a mission for one of the century's most prolific inventors. April 1912, near Boston, Massachusetts. Hello? Reginald Fessenden is about to receive some news that will change the course of his life. It'll also change sailing and navigation forever. The Titanic sunk. The Titanic was supposed to be unsinkable. But her crew spotted a killer iceberg too late. And now, the world's most advanced steamship is at the bottom of the Atlantic. Most of the world is paralyzed with shock. Not Fessenden. He's already wondering if better navigational tools could have saved the Titanic. It's only been six years since Fessenden stunned the world with the first AM radio broadcast. But it hasn't made him any money. He's recently been offered work with a marine navigation company. They asked Fessenden to build them a better hydrophone. A crude underwater microphone that helps sailors pick up sounds when they're close to shore. Now, the Titanic incident brings a whole new meaning to the job. I think Fessenden was very much motivated by the sinking of the Titanic and I think he knew a way he could create a device that would prevent that disaster from happening again. Fessenden's earlier work with sound waves has given him an idea. What if ships could be outfitted with a device that not only receives underwater signals, like the hydrophone, but can also transmit a signal? Fessenden knows that when the outgoing signal hits an object, like an iceberg, it will bounce back. The time it takes to bounce back will reveal how far away the object is. Fessenden is thinking about a phenomenon that occurs often in nature. What's now known as sonar. If you've ever been to the Grand Canyon and yelled and heard the echo coming back, that's a form of sonar. You're transmitting a sound pulse using your vocal cords, you're doing it loudly with your hands cupping it to project the sound in a certain direction, and you're waiting for that echo to come back. What Fessenden has to figure out is how to generate and receive a man-made signal underwater. He'll build on his previous work with radio waves and electromagnetics. Fessenden and his assistant get to work building a sturdy metal drum. They'll use an electric motor to generate two magnetic fields inside the drum. The magnetic fields will react against each other that will cause a copper tube inside the drum to vibrate against a metal plate. And that movement will create sound waves. The machine is also designed to work in reverse as a receiver. The vibrating motion gives the invention its name, the Fessenden Oscillator. It takes months to complete a prototype a rugged apparatus that won't leak. By April 1914, it's ready to be tried at sea. It's been two years to the month since the Titanic went down in the North Atlantic. Now, Fessenden heads into the same waters to test his invention, courtesy of the U.S. Coast Guard. Thank you very much, Captain. Greatly appreciate it. My pleasure. The ship was steam-powered, so it was loud, it was dirty, it smelled, and there was no luxury cabins on board. So it wasn't a pleasant trip. It's dangerous, too. The icebergs are everywhere. I see one! 
They saw an iceberg, they got the crew together to get the oscillator ready. They lowered the oscillator over the side. They send a sound wave toward the iceberg and wait for the echoing signal. They were using very crude methods, counting the number of sound pulses that went out and measuring with a stopwatch how long it took. The echo wave comes back from the iceberg. Fessenden's proven his machine can detect objects. The next step, move away from the iceberg to test how far the signal will carry. And I think they lost contact with it at a range of about two miles, which would have been plenty distance to avoid hitting an iceberg if you were on a ship heading towards one. Fessenden's done it. He's built a better hydrophone for the company who hired him. But he's also built a revolutionary new way to navigate. During the First World War, the U.S. Navy uses Fessenden's device to pick up the sound of enemy submarines. But it takes another decade before the oscillator is used as Fessenden intended to measure nautical distance and depth. The revolution that the Fessenden oscillator created was in depth sounding. Anyone that owns a boat, whether it's an ocean liner or a, a, a submarine or a destroyer or a, a small boat that's used for fishing, has a depth sounder in it. And every one of those people owes thanks to Reginald Fessenden and his oscillator because he was there first. It's another huge achievement for a brilliant inventor. But Fessenden doesn't spend long celebrating. Every idea sparks another. And by the end of his life, he'll have more than 500 patents. Other big ideas of the 1910s. 1916, the tank makes tracks across the battlefields of Europe. Inspired by a British officer who envisioned the firepower of a machine gun combined with the traction of a caterpillar. And 1913, the crossword puzzle scores big with New Yorkers. A British kids game reinvented as a brain teaser for adults. Coming up, an American businessman revolutionizes firefighting and risks his own life in the heart of the inferno.